Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at Valletta, which is a two to four player board game dating back to 2017. This one takes around an hour to play on average. Now the key mechanisms of Valletta are deck building and resource management, and the game is gonna look somewhat like this when it is set up, where you have these rows and columns of cards which have been semi-randomly laid out. You can see that the big cards here depict these buildings, but you've also got these smaller cards on top which could be other cards that could potentially be added to your personal deck of cards. At the center of these, all these cards, you've got this street here, which is actually a, a score track going from one to 25. And this is gonna be one of the way the end game is triggered because whenever you get up to 25 points during the game, then again, the end game is gonna be triggered and then any end game points are gonna be added on to your final score or to create your final score. You've also got this little figure here of Jean Parisot de Valette, who travels up this track here, revealing these barrels as you go, which is gonna be another way of triggering the end game. So if um, if that figure reaches the top before you do, then that's gonna uh, also trigger the end. Uh, each player is also gonna have their own personal player board here, which is simply a kind of a housekeeping tool to show which cards you played during the round, your yet to be drawn deck, and also your discard pile. Uh, each player is also gonna start with their own identical set of cards for their own personal deck, which look like this. We have these kind of five basic cards here to gather resources, such as your lumberjack, which, which lets you take some wood, your stone cutter for stone, your shopkeeper for gold, and your brick market uh, maker for brick. Your handmaid and let you take any of the above. And you've also got these other three more special unique cards, one of which is to move that Jean Parisot de Villette figure up the track, and then it allows you to hire or fire a character, which means you can potentially add new cards or shed cards from your deck. You've got the Apprentice card, which lets you copy an existing red or green card. You've already played that round, so you know if you wanted to play that one after the shopkeeper, you can gain two coins. And you've also got the Builder, which lets you build or upgrade a building, which is going to be one of the main ways that you get your points. And let's talk about how that works now. So you're always gonna have five cards in your hand, and then every round you're gonna play three cards onto these action slots on your player board, resolving them one at a time. So let's just say here the yellow player has played this their Jean card, which moves the piece along the track like so. So again, that was gonna move it along like so, revealing this barrel and taking the reward on the other side. This one's gonna be a brick. So I'm gonna take one of those bricks and add it to my personal supply like so. The second one is simply to take a stone, and again, I can add that to my personal supply. And the third one is to build or upgrade a building. So let's just say that the yellow player, just for some unknown reason, wants to build this one in the top left here, this banker. So you can see it's gonna cost me a wood, a stone, a brick, and two gold. So let's just say I have those resources, I can spend them, put them back into the supply, so let's just say I had two gold, I cashed that one in, I cash on all the resources, then I'm gonna take one of my eight buildings, which is another way the end game can trigger, because if you place all eight of them, again, it's gonna trigger the end. Um, and then you're gonna put your building onto the spot on that board like so, to claim that it is yours. And you're also gonna take the card on it and add it straight into your hand, potentially to be chosen for the next action phase. This one, you can see the banker says for each of my gold icons, I take a gold. So the things I'm looking for on these cards is not only the victory points, because again, at the end of the game, these are gonna be um, a big swing of your points, but also that symbol, because again, they're gonna correlate or synergize with certain cards in your deck, because again, if I play this banker now, and I say I collect a number of these coin buildings, then I can potentially get a lot of coins with one single placement. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for. But additionally, if you ever build in the column where the Jean figure is here, you're gonna get an additional two points. So you can see at the moment, this first column of cards, if we're building them while the Jean figure is there, we're gonna get those two points, but as he progresses down the track, that's gonna to relate to the different columns. Now, there are also some other incentives in terms of placing and claiming buildings for yourself that you might want to focus on. So now I have built this building. What it means is that each of the adjacent buildings orthogonally, so this one and this one, are now gonna cost me one coin fewer to spend in order to claim them for myself. You still have to spend the resources, but it's gonna make it cheaper in terms of the gold. So let's just say I owned this building and this building. This one is gonna be reduced by two because I've got two orthogonal buildings, meaning it's only gonna cost me two gold rather than the four. Additionally, if you didn't want to build a new building with that builder card, you can actually upgrade an existing building. So let's say I bought this one earlier in the game. I could spend those resources again, ignoring the money cost, and then flip that card over like so, which at the end of the game is going to get me even more victory points, but also is going to 
offer more powerful rewards when it comes to playing specific cards. Again, this one here, the banker is now going to get me two coins when I play it because I've got a building with two on it. And once you've used all your action cards, you're going to discard all those ones into the pile down here. You're going to draw back up to five cards ready to go again for your next turn, choosing the ones you want, gaining those resources and potentially claiming buildings and upgrading them for more points and more resources. So let's have a brief look at what all the different buildings do. So you've got this one here that says you can spend one of each good to get five victory points. That's a nice one if you've got surplus resources. And you've got this blue card here for each of your green buildings you take money. So sometimes you're not just looking at um, the actual ones on the things themselves, but sometimes the colour is going to be important. Uh, yeah, this one here is going to be spending resources to get four victory points. This one here for each opponent with more money than you has to give you money. You know, spending money to get four victory points. Um, building buildings is going to cost you fewer resources. Um, for each of your upgrading building, upgraded buildings gets you uh, an extra point. So you can see all these different strategies and things you can go for, which might tailor what you want to build and the resources you're gonna collect and the way you manage your hand of cards. So again, not only are you trying to focus on the buildings to get these victory points and the income, but also the cards on it because they're gonna be added to your deck. And as a standard deck builder game, as you might presume, once you start playing through your cards, discarding them, when you can't draw up to your hand limit, you, dis you shuffle your discard pile and start again playing through your deck. And once one of those end game triggers has happened, i.e. you go and Jean getting to the top, your player piece getting to 25 points or somebody placing all eight of their buildings, then you're gonna take all your discarded cards, shuffle them into a new deck and play one more time through your entire deck. And then final points are gonna get calculated depending on the points you've gained during the game, any buildings you've claimed, upgraded buildings, and of course any spare resources on a three to one ratio. Okay, so let's get into my review on Valletta. So this game does really fit that niche of a medium, lightweight, Euro kind of resource conversion style game. Um, and it does that quite well. You know, this isn't overwhelming, it's a very simple game, but there's enough going on here to keep it interesting, particularly when it merges with this deck building aspect of the game. You know, you're gonna start with a very basic hand of cards just to get your basic resources, but sooner or later, you're gonna start building buildings not only with the intention of getting the victory points and resources on them, but also because of the cards that come with them and accompany those ones. And you know, these are just naturally improve on the ones that you have. So sometimes you need to start playing other cards in order to uh, kind of thin out your deck, making it more efficient, keeping it trimmed to make sure you keep getting your best cards out again and again. So I do like the way that works. It's got some simple, um, yeah, just some simple resource management and hand management with the deck building side of the game. Um, additionally, there is a quite a tight grid here. It does look like there's a lot of buildings, but before you know it, they do get gobbled up quite quickly. And again, you're not only looking at them for the points, but also the resources, but the cards on them themselves. And there's some also other things that are going on, such as the position of the Jean figure, because you know you want to be getting those extra two points if you can, um, because that's gonna help you tick along quite nicely. But additionally, you'll start finding yourself wanting to take those adjacent buildings because you're gonna get um, quite a significant discount if you keep doing that and can save yourself quite a bit of coin. So I did find myself kind of restricting myself in a way in order to stop myself from spreading all over the map and just focusing on a certain area to keep getting those orthogon uh, orthogonal bonuses. But I suppose you didn't really have to do that if you don't want to, but something you need to consider and um, you know how are you going to play more efficiently and manage your resources more efficiently. So there's just enough going on here to keep it interesting, but not too much to be overwhelming. It ticks along at a remarkably fast pace. You know, this game only does take about 20 minutes per player. Um, and it's one of those games where before you've even finished um, kind of housekeeping your turn, it's pretty much your go again, because sometimes the um, actual actions are just resolved lightning quick. You know, just take a few resources and go, or maybe just flip a building over and you're good to go. So the downtime in this game is next to none, really. It takes along so, so quickly to keep players engaged. And that kind of free-flowing and fast income and outgo of resources does keep the game feeling somewhat exciting and um, at a fast pace. Now, on top of the basic underlying strategy of just collecting resources and building buildings, there are some kind of layers of strategy and different kind of side strategies you can do by utilizing certain cards. Like for example, this yellow card here might want to make me build a bit of a money gaining engine by taking other cards that might synergize with money buildings. And then I can try to keep spamming this card to let me exchange money into victory points. So you do have some other kind of layers within layers here. And it's not so paint by numbers in order to just gain resources and build buildings. And yeah, that is the crux of the game, but there's a little kind of spin-off and offshoot things you can do and try out to be a bit different to your opponents. And of course, there's not that many duplicates of the same card. 
And each game, there are different kind of um, layouts and things, different cards that, sh that show up. So you can't always do the same thing and it'll kind of keep you guessing on what you want to do and how to play through those cards most efficiently. So I do enjoy this end game sequence where as soon as one of those end game triggers is, is triggered, you get to play through your entire deck again, meaning that you can utilize the cards that you've invested in one more time. And even playing those in orders is quite a cool puzzle because you need to manage the resources, in order to make sure you're upgrading all your buildings just in time, maybe even weighing up with, you know, should I venture into a new territory before my opponent does? Um, because again, that, build, that the whole board does squeeze down tighter and tighter and eventually you will be fighting over the best buildings. But yeah, that idea of going through your whole deck again, cycling through it, just feels quite, um, it feels quite satisfying when it happens. So a lot of games often when it comes to an end, it just ends abruptly. Um, especially when it comes to a deck building game and things, when you've invested in your deck, you really want to utilize that card at least a couple of times, and at least Valletta lets you do that. And you know, knowing how you're going to use those cards as well, particularly the builder cards, you know, are you going to go to a new building? Are you going to upgrade one? Or are you going to focus on using those resources for other cards that you've taken in order to get the most victory points? So it's quite nice that it gives you that, that, again, that, that satisfaction to end the game on a high. The production for Valletta is more than adequate. I like the way the game looks. It's nice and bright and has that traditional Clemens Franz artwork, which is so synonymous with the Euro games. You know, all the characters look bright and colorful. And um, it's, a, yeah, it's a nice looking game. Um, I like the two different card types, i.e. the ones that you use for your deck building and the buildings themselves. So it's quite nice how they fit together and um, it's all quite logical in the way it works. And the components and things in terms of the wooden pieces are, as you'd expect, just simple wooden um, stone cubes and the little brick tiles are, again, perfectly perfectly fine and as you'd expect. Um, the buildings, the same, they're simple wooden pieces. And the player boards, again, just, they're not really a big part of the game. You could play without them, but it's nice that they went to that extra effort to give you something to manage your cards with. But yeah, um, I've got no issues at all with the production. I think it's as you'd expect from a game of this type. Okay, so final thoughts on Valletta by Stefan Dora. So straight up, this is a really well-designed game. It plays nice and smoothly. It's ultra rapid in, in relation to how quickly your turns are resolved. And it does have that nice back and forth feeling and tension of grabbing the buildings um, and weighing up what you want to do. You know, do you want the cars? Do you want the buildings? Are you going to build where Jean is? Are you going to focus on those orthogonal um, adjacency bonuses in order to get things cheaper? How are you going to manage your deck of cards? And when are you going to spend them? You know, are you going to keep them in your hand a bit longer? So there's enough going on here to keep you interested, but I think the the ceiling is quite low to how many times you're going to find it that enjoyable. I think before you know it, you're going to think or you're going to be ready to move on to the next thing. And that's where I felt with this one. I ended up enjoying my plays of it. I think it's a lovely experience but I was kind of ready to move on to the next thing and not really look back much further. Now I would say if you are regularly introducing um, new gamers to this style of weight or this type of game I think this is a quite a quite a good recommendation actually I think it fits a nice niche to again bridge that gap in between those more kind of um, more kind of uh, mainstream games into something more again niche and euro like this one does a good job of again, bridging that gap. But I think if this is your style of game, you're gonna move past it pretty quickly. So I think if I would have played this game maybe in my first or second year in the hobby, this one would have gone down tremendously well and I would have enjoyed it way more than I do now. Now again, I'm not saying that I, I don't enjoy it. I think it's a much better than average game with a lot of things, a lot of good things going on in its favor. But yeah, that, that desire to explore things further, or to be honest, I don't think there is that, that much scope to explore things further. I think once you've played it a few times, you've pretty much seen what this game has to offer and it's gonna become very familiar very quickly. 